Hello everyone, this is Ambassador of the Four Horror Guys. Today we're reading Galatians 3 from the Nero Service House and as an IV version. Like you, or like oftentimes, if I sound a bit, a bit sick or out of breath, I do sincerely apologize. I happen to be quite sick. But yeah, we're going to be reading Galatians 3 from the Nero Service House and as an IV version from BibleGate2.com. Or if you guys don't want to be long, you guys can go to BibleGate2.com if you guys. I don't really care how you guys know, but let's go and start. Galatians 3 in the Russian version and every version. Faith or works of the law. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I'd like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you not trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain if it really was in vain? So again I ask, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among <coughs> sorry guys, and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by your believing what you or by yet yeah, or by your believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and an announce the gospel in advance. To Abraham, all nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, as it, are, as it is written. Curses is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God, because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, on the contrary it says, the person who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order, in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we may receive the promise of the Spirit. And the law and the promise. Brothers and sisters, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in this case. Promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say unto seeds, meaning many people, but unto your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. What I mean is this the law introduced four hundred and thirty years later. The, the law introduced four hundred and thirty years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by, by God, and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depend on, depends on the law, and it no longer depends on the promise, but God in his grace give it, gave it to Abraham through a promise. Why then was the law given at all? And it was added because of transgression until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. A mediator, however, implies more than one party, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Appar absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness could, would certainly have come by the law. But scripture has locked up everything under the control of sins without what was promised. Being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Children of God, before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we, we must be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself, cl clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, nor neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and the heirs according to the promise. You guys, will, will you enjoy it? I'm going to see you next time. Bye.